Hello YouTube. This gun is unloaded. I take no legal responsibility for any modifications or actions you take based on this video review. This is a review of the Chipmunk Hunter pistol in 22 Magnum by Keystone Sporting Arms, LLC. I have no affiliation with Keystone Sporting Arms or any other gun manufacturer or ammunition manufacturer. Specifications as listed on the website, caliber 22 long rifle or 22 magnum, action manually cocking single shot bolt action with a forged steel and machined low scope bolt handle, sights standard with Williams fire sights or scope base, barrel 10.5 inch fluted barrel, finish blued barrel and receiver or stainless barrel and receiver. This is the stainless barrel and receiver. Weight, two and a half pounds. This gun comes from the factory with a right hand grip. Intended purpose for me, this weapon would be taken along on hiking, snowshoeing, camping, and hunting trips for grouse, rabbit, squirrels, bobcats, and coyotes. Initial impressions. I weighed the gun. The action and barrel were 24 ounces. The stock was 14 ounces for a total weight of 38 ounces, 2.375 pounds. This compares favorably with my Ruger Bearcat in 22 long rifle. It weighs 24 ounces. The Williams fire sights are bright and of a useful enough size and shape. The trigger was slightly sharp on the edges which I found annoying for repeated use. On a side note, I used some 2000 grit sandpaper on it and buffed the edges away slightly. The grip seemed a bit undersized for adult hands. I'm not large handed at three and a half inches across my palm and my trigger pull wasn't straight back the way I like it for accuracy with that small of a grip. Also, I'm left-handed, so I changed the grip. The tools I needed were a sawzall, a dremel, a wood rasp, and a 2000 grit sandpaper. I shaved away a lot of the contour on the left-hand side here to match or mirror the right-hand side. And I like how it turned out. It's a little bit rough. I also added a pinky spot on the grip. An extra extension to the grip length. After disassembling and cleaning, I did some test firing at my house with 30 grain VMAX from Hornady, pictured here, and found that it was going to take two or three strikes on each shot to get ignition. I took a look at a couple of the once fired or once struck cartridges and thought the strike looked very big and light. And then I changed the shape of the firing pin to match that of my single shot bolt action Winchester Model 67. I changed it to be perpendicular chisel shaped. I got zero misfires after that. I then took the pistol to my local gun range and at 25 yards off a sandbag rest with the same 30 grain VMAX Hornady ammo. I made four five shot groups onto paper plates while siding it in. Also I was breaking in the barrel so to speak and becoming familiar with the trigger. Each group was between 0.75 inches and 2.5 inches. I did not remember to bring the chronograph but 
the ammo is listed on the box at 2200 feet per second muzzle velocity and I would expect it to be up around 1950 with the 10 and a half inch barrel. After getting the fire sights dialed in I was able to place the shots exactly where I wanted them. I, I did bring one target home and I know I messed up and didn't bring all of my targets. I did not intend on doing a review when I was doing the sighting in, but this is my final target from 25 yards off the sandbags. I picked each spot, lowering the point of aim each time, and got this result. I brought it home to show my father-in-law. Then my six-year-old daughter colored it for me and assigned a scoring system. Let's get it right here. Um, I think you can see that was the first shot, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Pretty good point of aim demonstration, I think. <clears throat> I like to set up the iron sights to picture like this with the dot even to the horizontal plane made by the top of the rear sight. I felt like this allows me to truly pick a spot on the target without being obstructed by the rear sight or the combination of the rear sight and the dot if it sat further down into the buckhorn down here making a wall. My final thoughts on this review. The gun is very accurate with the Hornady 30 green at 25 yards. This gun is definitely this this gun definitely fits the bill for my intended purpose and at $185 I'm satisfied. I think it could also be stretched into a survival gun as 22 Magnum as a caliber has a lot of jacketed bullet options including a 50 grain soft point made under the Federal Game Shock label. I intend on lightening the stock further with a wood bit and a drill and strategically placed 3 quarter inch holes along the foregrip and possibly into the butt stock. <clears throat> also of interest in the process of researching this gun, I found a small company called Ruta Locura out of Ogden, Utah that makes carbon fiber wrapped barrels and carbon fiber grips for cricket rifles. I contacted the owner and he said he could make one for the pistol version. And I estimated based on the converted rifle weight that the converted pistol weight could be down around 10 ounces. But with a $250 price tag it's a project for the future, considering the high level of accuracy I got with this, and it's already comparatively lightweight to other 22 Magnum firearms. That's all I've got for now. If you've got any questions, please post them.